What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're going to check out the fall of WWE music. What happened? Now, I've been looking forward to checking this video out. It's been in my list of videos to check out for quite some time. I know a few of you guys have sent this to me on Twitter and on Instagram. So best believe I did see it. It's just, you know, I had other videos I had to get to first. But I've been looking forward to this one only because I remember a time WWE like music in the sense of their uh intro music for their shows their promo music for like different pay-per-views each pay-per-view would have a specific theme song like and the the wrestlers entrance music music of well music songs or whatnot or whatever choice of song that they would choose man it, it just it used to hit different i mean it used to be one of those things where it's like okay all right y'all already know what's my favorite wrestler theme song um y'all already know so i don't even have to say it if you know put it down in the comment section below but just those hearing those theme songs being played for a, a particular wrestler just always would get me hype or watching a promo package and listening to some of the songs they would have for the promo packages it just was so great and i wish they would get back to that you know i'm not even gonna lie to you i like the theme song they have uh for this year's elimination chamber i'm rocking with it it actually it actually sounds pretty good and i, I actually was I, I i didn't have a problem with the theme song for the royal rumble as well i was rocking with it i just didn't care for the live performance of it before the show ended so we're gonna check out some of these uh uh we'll go back down i'm sure uh memory lane for uh some of these classic classic songs and uh, see what went wrong with WWE. I could easily tell you off top, they just, Vince wasn't trying to pay for royalties and shit. That's really what it was. So there's like, you know, we'll just create our own uh, different songs and stuff. And a lot of that stuff sucks. So we're gonna check this out. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's do the damn thing. Music makes you feel something. Doesn't matter what artist you listen to, what genre you like, or when it's from. Music is everywhere, and it plays a huge part in how we're feeling in our everyday life. Of course. Life. In the WWE, music can make or break a character. It's a huge part of the atmosphere of the show. The opening notes of a wrestler's theme could send chills down your spine as you wait in anticipation. It can add value to a story underneath a great promo package, build anticipation for an upcoming match, or final goodbye. There's so many ways in which music is important to wrestling. Listen to these snippets I'm about to play. Mm. What? Well, we know, we know that type of response that one gets from Dub. All those sounds I just played for you, you associate a name to a face immediately within mm -hmm. about two seconds of the song starting. When you hear a theme for the first time, especially for fans who may be new. You think you know me? I love it. <laughs> every time. Every time it gets me lit. Every single time. <laughs> you were... Within the first 10 to 15 seconds, it has the ability to draw you into the character because of a distinct and memorable sound, Cody or because Rose, of that same sound you turn off altogether is and nice don't care about anything else. Come to today's music, and it's just lacking an emotional purpose. There's no distinction between themes. The individuality is gone. Wrestling themes used to have a purpose, and now the purpose is just to have a track playing while someone enters Facts. because that's the norm. Over the last little bit, WWE's popularity in music as well as their in-house theme production has greatly declined. In recent years, their music has really lost a lot of what made it special. Now there's random instrumentals, mm -hmm. weird beats which sound like they've been pulled from the YouTube royalty-free music library. <laughs> Basically the same sound for oh, the majority of the roster. Love Kames theme, uh, themes, uh, theme song, man. Love Kames theme song. I love uh, old Randy Orton's thing. Hey, nothing you can say. Boy, that shit used to go hard, man. <laughs> and a general step back in production quality. They've strayed completely away from collaborating with bands and wrestlers as well mm -hmm. as licensing outside music. The days of Jim Johnston seemingly giving the most random wrestlers a unique theme are gone. CFO's music has also been phased out to add to that. WWE music overall is just not what it used to be. So we're gonna look at what happened, the rise of theme music, the men behind it, and WWE's insane music library that some people may not have even heard of. For 30 years, WWE music was a machine of consistently crafting hit after hit with mainstream artists and so much more. Back. And things began in the perfectly named rock and wrestling era. As crazy as it is, the reason that WWF went mainstream was because of music 
music and the musician Cindy Lauper. Lauper had a song called Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, and she met WWF manager Lou Albano on a plane. When the time came to put the music video together, she knew that Albano had to be in there. Perfectly mm. enough, Lauper hammerlocked him in the video. Well, there was also a Piper's Pit segment where Lauper appeared and began a storyline with him. And this moment blew up because of Entertainment Tonight's coverage of it. Lauper's wow. music was providing big-time hits for MTV, and her record label saw a WWF and MTV collaboration as huge. Both music and pro wrestling had been in existence and popular for a long while, but the partnership of MTV and WWF took things to a whole new level. The network themselves wanted to go beyond just music because they didn't get too much money for playing these videos, and it was oftentimes a repeat cycle, so they turned to broadcasting pro wrestling. MTV agreed to air the first WWF special called The Brawl to end it all, and it was a massive success for them, mm. becoming the highest rated broadcast for them ever up until that point. Following the war to settle the score, Vince McMahon launched the a war concept to that settle we all know score. today is one of the biggest <laughs> events in entertainment, and that is WrestleMania. This show was filled with celebrity cameos, and it launched WWF and Hulk Hogan into a different stratosphere. Mm -hmm. Hogan, of course, the first true North American megastar and face of the WWF. January 23rd, 1984 is widely credited as the day that Hulkamania was born. Wrestling started to take over, and Hulk Hogan was everywhere. Yep. Vince McMahon had this idea to change wrestling. He wanted it to be this colorful spectacle. After his appearance in Rocky III, Hogan was riding a wave of popularity, and the music collaboration only helped further it. Out of it, he got his own Saturday morning cartoon called Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Hogan even went to the 85 Grammy Awards as Lopper's bodyguard. The partnership wow. helped WWF become prominent, which is what Vince wanted as he saw the It's so crazy. I mean, he was the spokesperson for WWF at the time, bro. He was the spokesperson. He was the catalyst of really getting it mainstream. Whether you, you love him or hate him, you can't deny Hulk Hogan was the catalyst for what we even have today. There wouldn't be no rock. There wouldn't be no John Cena. Wouldn't be, you know, wrestlers, you know, getting into the mainstream light when it comes to media, movies, music videos. None of that would be a thing if you, if you didn't have Hulk. I know he's, you know, said some wild things, done some wild things, pissed some people off. But I'm not going to deny the impact he had on wrestling. I'm just not. You know what I'm saying? Just, just got to give a person their props. Coming explosion of cable television, the allure to see larger than life heroes cross over with a who's who in the music world propelled yeah, WWF into the mainstream. Animated series, interviews, cameos became the norm, but music became bigger for the WWF. In 1985, they released their first album called The Wrestling Album. In here was a song called Real American, which actually wasn't even intended for Hulk Hogan. Oh. His track on the CD is literally named Hulk Hogan's Theme. That one was eventually used for his cartoon, and Rick Derringer's theme became Hogan's. With their connections to mainstream artists, it That's helped the, the album sell well enough to get a sequel. For their second album, Vince wanted to build on the success, but with more original music and less cover songs. Gorgeous George is generally credited as the first wrestler to use entrance music as early as the 1950s. Oh, damn. Though Sergeant Slaughter takes credit, saying that he was the one who suggested it to Vince McMahon. And pretty soon after that, every act started to have music. Originally, they used music like Eye the Tiger and Another One Bites the Dust, mm. but because of how expensive licensing fees were, Vince Vince McMahon wanted to move the production to in-house. In came two men who are responsible for some of the most iconic theme songs ever. Two men who some may not even know because of the popularity of Jim Johnston, who we'll get to in a bit, and that's J.J. McGuire and Jimmy Hart. Jimmy Hart had success in the band The Gentries, and when he got involved in wrestling, his love of music came with it, this mm. time writing entrance themes. Along with him, J.J. McGuire was widely credited as the original master of the theme song. These guys created Sexy Boy, All About wow. the Money, Dusty Rhodes' American Dream, The Legion of Doom's theme, Bret Hart, and the Honky Tonk Band, among others. These two had Damn, hooks, legendary they ones. in their style, and they had the ability to bring the character to life. The dynamic was that J.J. McGuire wrote the music, played the instruments, and arranged the song jimmy hart did the vo that's the even the gif we just saw that's that's the spot where uh jake the snake roberts got bashed over the head with a guitar but it was a real guitar and uh he was seriously hurt for life the dynamic was that jj mcguire wrote the music played the instruments and arranged oh the song. jimmy hart did the vocals and worked on the lyrics many saying that he had the golden ear 
and understood how to correlate themes with characters on screen. With mm-hmm. theme music, WWF became less sport and more entertainment. The matches quickened and the music gave it that vibe. Now everything was being produced in-house and A, Vince McMahon was making money and B, they didn't have to pay those huge licensing fees nope. anymore. Hart and Maguire alongside Hulk Hogan were part of the wrestling boot band in which Hulk Hogan released a full CD and even had a rap song to his name. Want to be a Hulk maniac? I can sure tell you how to stay on track. You gotta train, say your prayers, eat your vitamins too. These are all the things that the maniacs do. This only helped grow his name. Jesus Christ, I I I just gave this thing a prop. I, I, I want to explode from cringe. Oh my god. Following the release of Pile Driver, the wrestling album, WWE created a third one which was called WrestleMania the album, and this one was co-produced by Simon Cowell. Mm. The focus changed from having Didn't wrestlers I know that. sing music to just selling compilations of theme songs. As the company moved away from the new generation era, they hit their peak popularity and would not only produce what's seen as their best programming, but began an insane 15-year stretch of continued success in music. Mm -hmm. This began in the Attitude Era, the most profitable and popular time frame for the WWF. Add to that two mainstream megastars in The Rock and Stone Cold, and the possibilities were endless. Mm -hmm. By the 1990s, gangster rap had spread across the world, and even though rock was still a bigger genre, the swearing and eccentric nature of the medium was what many thought was cool. Well, couple that with the Attitude Era, which was all antics and mayhem, and you have a winning formula. Hip-hop and the WWE go as far back as 1989 when Run DMC performed at WrestleMania. Oh, also, I didn't know that. Also, during the 90s, Jim Johnston took over as the main guy creating entrance music for the WWE. In a time where CDs were all the rage, WWE fully leaned into this, collaborating and producing compilations that helped them grow their viewership in the mainstream as well as make the money behind it. WWE understood how valuable their brand had been since the late 90s, and they started to put more resources into music as the company became a pop culture phenomenon. So, SmackDown Records was founded in 1999 SmackDown Records! Under this name, they distributed everything from compilations of wrestlers' theme songs to unreleased cuts of music, unheard music, collaborations with other artists, and even some single projects. Most of their releases have been distributed by Columbia Music, and from 1999 to 2010, they released an album pretty much every year before they moved their focus to just releasing singles. And in the late 90s and early 2000s, they had huge success and a discography that we need to take a look at. Damn. WWF Full Metal was their first real success. Following that, in 2000, the company teamed up with Priority Records to drop WWF Aggression, and this had some of the biggest names in the rap game collaborate with WWE. To be honest with you, I didn't know none of this was a thing. I was just into the shows and the, the characters and the theme songs. I didn't know they was dropping goddamn albums. You know what I'm saying? Like, I nuns knew that. Granted, my mom wouldn't want me to watch uh, wrestling like that, to be honest with you. So I had to watch it at my cousin's house most of the time. So I definitely know I wasn't going to be able to get some, hey, mom, can I get the latest WWF aggression CD? No, that's some of that wrestling. No. <laughs> WWE superstars. They created alternate themes, some of which were extremely well done. This was Jim Johnston's first big hit album. It featured Snoop Dogg, Cool Keith, Method Man, and Run DMC. Since WWE was so popular and they knew people who made music videos, wrestlers also got <laughs> their the own Jeff music Boy videos ID. to accompany the custom tracks. Damn! The rock has come back, laying down the smack on you, monkey crap, candy coated axe. These videos. What? Have- I didn't know this was a thing. I don't remember this. What? Hey yo! Custom tracks. <laughs> Has come back, laying down the smack on you, monkey crap, candy coated axe. These videos had their own <laughs> premieres on MTV after wow. Raw's most notably The Rock's Know Your Role and The Kings for DX. Method Man in Know Your Role was able to get all of Rock's expressions into the song perfectly. For its target audience, it worked. The perfect culmination of a very popular genre of music and a I form of entertainment this, that you this couldn't go awesome, anywhere man. without seeing in the WWF. The cash was flowing in. WWE's albums and collaborations made it into the Billboard Top 200 quite a few times. Whoa. For those unfamiliar, that gives you an idea of the most streamed, bought, and downloaded albums in the U.S. Their first success was WWF The Music Volume 3, which peaked at number 10 in 1999, going what? platinum. A platinum certification indicates that the album sold a million units, while gold is 500,000. This is done by the... 
they went platinum? I never knew that. What? What the <laughs> RIAA, which is the Recording Industry Association of America. The follow-up to that album, Volume 4, debuted at number 4 later in the same year, and it went platinum as well, with both of these selling over a million copies as of 2002. I already touched on WWF Aggression. That one debuted at number 8, and it went gold. By the time 2001 came around, it was another hit for WWE and this Jim Johnston, insane. producing WWF The Music Volume 5. It sold 176,000 copies its first week, also going gold and what? peaking at number 2 on the Billboard Top Hold 200. But you know how I talked about WWF? And this is a different time. These are pure CD sales. Right, this is before, like mp3s and stuff like that and all the you know how they do the digital sales now that's pure cds a hundred k that's Progression. crazy well that was a collaboration between the wwf and hip-hop now they did the same thing but they put a metal and rock spin on it this one titled wwf forcible entry this featured disturbed finger 11 our lady peace and it did really well 145,000 wow. copies in week one and another gold certification. This also became the fourth straight album to debut in the top 10 for the company and featured what would be the intros for Raw and SmackDown with mm -hmm. Across the Nation and The Beautiful People. Aside from that, the rollout of fan love songs was underway. Vince McMahon's No Chance, Drowning Pool did a version of Triple H's The Game, Slow Chemical, Break the Walls were all featured on that scene. Love me some Slow Chemical. Love me some slow <laughs> I showed these numbers because it's important to see just how prominent WWE's wow. albums were. They sold, they collaborated with well-known bands and musicians. They were able to create individual themes for many on the roster. And from here, things kind of started to go downhill, but not before a little bit more success. Anthology did really well getting the 13 and going platinum just 10 days after release. WWE Damn. Originals in 2004 didn't get any certification but reached 12 on the charts. If you haven't checked this one out, I'd recommend giving the Kurt Angle song a listen. The thought of Kurt Angle in a studio belting out I Don't Suck will never fail to make me laugh. <laughs> I don't suck. I don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> Success from here tailed off. Theme Attic peaked at number 38 and then Reckless Intent debuted at 8. This album had Nicki Minaj in it who was part of Victoria's song before she really blew up. As oh, far as WWE's wow. discography goes, they have four gold certifications and three platinums Which in the Which is US. really good. <laughs> but there's one man that I gotta quickly talk about. Alright, John Cena with the Astros fit. I rocks with it. I love it. That's the brief but memorable hip-hop career of John, John Cena. Cena yep. As far as a WWE wrestler goes anyways. We started this video in the 1980s. <laughs> now we're in 2005. Word life. He had a genuine love of hip-hop music, and his character on TV reflected that. Mm -hmm. By 2005, he released his debut studio album, You Can't See Me, under Columbia Records. This debuted at 15 on the Billboard Top 200, went platinum, and sold 143,000 copies in its first week. Wait, what? It went number 15 and sold 143K its first week. And it went platinum. I didn't know John Cena has a platinum album. I did not know that. What the fuck? I want you to understand. Your favorite rapper. Well, today's a lot of people's favorite rappers. It's not even getting close to that. Not even getting close to 143K the first week. Not even sniffing it. Wow. Gotta put respect on John Cena's name. Gotta put respect. First week. For Cena, he'd gotten some mainstream recognition, even rapped on some commercials, but his popularity as far as the mainstream goes didn't really take off like WWE would have hoped. By the time the album dropped, he shifted away from the character, and that's not a knock on him. Being a platinum selling wrestler rapper is an insane feat, but if you go back and look at the calculated approach that WWE were taking with Cena, it didn't work out. The releases continued but slowly fizzled out following WWE The Music Volume 7. WWE Music Group had also put out Uncaged albums which consisted of classic Jim Johnston songs that had never been officially released to the public. The last one of these releases came in February of 2021. 
at this point we're in the mid 2000s and there was so much music so much mm-hmm. collaboration you had albums dropping unreleased cuts they were licensing themes like metalingus and no more words each song had different artists and a unique tone and feel the ruthless aggression era was where jim johnston got to shine Jim Johnston is the composition guru behind some of the greatest soundtracks in the company's history. That rundown on music I talked about, he produced and wrote a majority of them. Sitting down and carefully crafting music that's representative of the character and beats which have landed in everyday playlists even today. Mm. Jim Johnston's ability to think deeper than the character is something truly magical and it doesn't take much to see that. He said that he looked at theme music as a dance. You can have a great theme, but if the guy can't dance to it, you're dead in the water. Johnston was able to curate a sound that made its way into the mainstream and transcended the business. In his time with the WWE, he created over 10,000 pieces of music, had multiple platinum selling albums, but most importantly, created the soundtrack to many's childhood. He was the guy who was responsible for the peak of wrestling entrance music. Some of his biggest successes are Vince McMahon's No Chance in Hell, Stone Cold's I Won't Do What You Tell Me with the iconic glass shatter, of Mm -hmm. course. Randy Orton's Voices, which was written and composed by Johnson but sang by Rev3. Before that, Burning My Light with Mercy Drive. Orton Mm. hated it. I personally love it. The Rock's electrifying Brock Lesnar's Next Big Thing, Undertaker's Rest in Peace, Kurt Angle's Metal, The Brood's theme, which is fantastic, Mm. Ultimate Warrior's theme. There's so, so many hits he created during the late 90s, well into the 2010s, that we could make a 25-minute video on it, no problem. That's In his music, awesome. he created emotion and perfectly tailored the music to the character, adding storytelling into the fold and not forgetting about the stylistic elements either. Brock Lesnar's gave you a hard metal beat oh, and the riff know, at the Doug beginning like signaled <laughs> warning that something was about to go no, down. You know, but Doug don't like that one. a cold-blooded killer who was a loner, walking alone to... Vic- I love that one. That I walk alone with the pyro at the beginning. <laughs> I love that. I walk for miles inside this. Pit. I love it, dog. Take me back. Randy Orton had burn in my light, and that makes complete sense. You have this young kid. He's cocky. He's a maniac. He's better than everyone. Love that thing song lyrics too. Represented that. Like I'm not here to play. You're gonna watch me kick ass and pass you by. There's a clip of how Randy Orton's theme came together and he talks about Orton being a quieter character. He says Orton's a character that's just mad at the world and he wants to get back at everyone. Hence, you get the lines, you got your rules and your religion all designed to keep you safe. He said that he tries to start off every song with something unique to the character. Think about all those riffs that I played at the top of the video. What set the music apart was the instant recognizability. Mm -hmm. Rock's catchphrase, Austin's glass shatter, Taker's gong, Foley's car crash. With him, you saw involvement from the wrestlers in the music. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys when you were younger thought that the wrestlers actually sang their song, which is crazy to think of, right? (laughs) When someone would turn heel, they'd get a more slowed down version of their music, more dark and cryptic, and it wouldn't be a complete 180. They'd eventually go back or they'd get a new theme altogether that would Mm -hmm. still fit. With that, a very important factor I mentioned at the top of the video was collaboration. With Johnston's music, he would bring in the right band to form a different and distinctive sound for the music. Saliva, Finger Mm -hmm. Eleven, Kill Switch Engage, Mm -hmm. Disturbed, Kid Rock, Motorhead to name a few. He made the randomest wrestlers have such good theme songs and he was the one who populated the catalog of WWE's music. He would play instruments, and the ones he didn't know, he learned to play just enough so that he could get the theme done. Diverse characters, different shapes, sizes, occupations, rock, metal, pop, country, rap, punk, R&B, reggae. The guy made a Punjabi song, and it was really well done, and that's... Damn, I'm I'm guessing he probably did Kofi's song. Y'all remember uh, Kofi when he was a Jamaican? (laughs) S.O.S. That that shit kind of had a little bop to it. (laughs) Boo, boo. From a brown guy. The point is, chances are your favorite WWE theme song was done by Jim Johnston. But now things aren't the same. Here's what he said about the current landscape of WWE music. I don't know what's happened. The music is so bad these days. It's just, Mm. it's like just sound effects and noises and stuff. It doesn't have anything to do with the characters and the storylines anymore. And and that's that's the essence of this business are this characters and storylines and uh, and that's currently lost. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. Johnston was released in 2017 after 32 years with the company, and it was a random release that really didn't have any rhyme or reason to it. He himself said that 
his and Vince McMahon's relationship had drifted apart, and as the company was changing away from the rugged sounding music to a more 2010s hip hop pop and polished sound, the creators of that sound were the band CFOs. In 2014, they joined the WWE. The hiring marked the first time that WWE had hired music producers from the outside because normally they choose to do everything themselves. Mm -hmm. If you guys remember in 2012, the Raw theme song was Tonight is the Night. That was mm -hmm. the group's musical debut for the company. Their biggest hits were AJ Styles' as Phenomenal, Sasha Banks, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Roode, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Becky Lynch, among others. That whole NXT generation was carried by them. But when they came in, there were complaints of their music. And then, I mean, tonight's the night I ain't really care for. I ain't gonna lie to you. But some of AJ Styles' theme song, I like it. Sasha Banks' theme song, I'm rocking with it. The people he listed, their theme songs fit them. It works. But that tonight is tonight, no. That did not. I just, I didn't care for it. I was like, all right lacking originality as well but you do have to give them credit the group while obviously lasting much less time than johnston did a good job and have some music I wonder, that really sneaks under the room. Maybe they did Kevin Owens, uh, Kevin Owens theme music because I like his as well. I love Kevin Owens theme music. Theme music. Johnston did have some tough music as well. Well, Johnston usually intended on making a full song, something that would basically land in a playlist and you could play every day. CFOs were extremely reliant on looping. They'd usually make one verse, one chorus, and then loop it for the entire song. People sometimes act like they didn't create good music. They were paid to create a crowd-popping loop, and they did that. At least they had individuality and recognizability. Johnston mm -hmm. looped as well, but he looped two parts instead of one, if that makes more sense. During their time with the WWE, they had two number one singles on the iTunes soundtracks oh, category. Glorious. With Shinsuke Nakamura's Rising Sun and Bobby Roode's Glorious. They exited WWE in 2020 due to issues with their publisher, and what WWE has now done since CFOs is no longer there is change a lot of those songs mm. with whatever they can basically fill them with, because obviously they don't want to pay for them. In come Def Rebel, who have had some good music, but it's fair to say in the entire musical library and out of the music producers that the company has had, have the most unoriginal sounding music. A lot of the time, it's the same synth with every song. Music doesn't have identity. It's a fast-paced instrumental, very reliant on heavy guitar chords or the off hip-hop beat. Mm -hmm. No vocals, and when there are vocals, they're random sound bites that don't resonate with the wrestler. Yep. It's not fair to say that they haven't done a good job, but they've missed a lot more than they've hit. For every head of the table, there's a Watch Me and 10 other uninspiring songs. And fans have vocalized this a ton. The other problem is when a theme Roman Reigns fits his. Even though he's not saying anything, it fits his persona. It when I remember when it first debuted, people were rocking with it because he came off like the final boss. And he is proven to still be the final boss with all his powers, all his special abilities. It's like it, it makes sense. It fits his character. But now that he mentioned that, it it you you rarely hear any theme songs except like the older ones with people saying anything. They're just instrumentals. Some of them, people are saying stuff like um, Bianca Belair's, you have somebody rapping or whatnot. Uh, you know, some people are saying stuff like um, Austin Theory's, his A-Town Down one, but uh, it's not too many of them. It does start to stick. It becomes synonymous with someone. It gets changed out of nowhere to the point where no theme song is safe anymore. The complaint in the current era is everything sounds too similar and a lot of the instruments are the same. And Jim Johnston had generic songs too. Let's not act like he didn't. But the skill they've come to now is tough. It's mm -hmm. also hard that they have such tough acts to follow up. There are some themes that do stand out in the WWE but they're few and far between. I've really emphasized it in this video, WWE lacks an original sound. And that's just not a consensus by the fans. Former composers are saying that as well. They lack collaboration. As far as their reach in the mainstream, which was once ridiculously high, today there's a lot of artists who mention wrestling and wrestling stars in their music. There's been a few wrestlers to be prominently featured in music videos mm -hmm. and even get their own songs. Some yep, themes have transcended wrestling and by many non-wrestling fans can be identified in an instant. But there's a huge difference in what theme music and their general connection used to be 
and what it is now. For over three decades, WWE had an incredible track record when it came to their in-house music, but in recent years, the decline in care and quality has really been lost. As of the recording of this video, it feels like we've seen the peak of WWE music and collaboration. Superstars and overall hype, it's all died down. The yeah. resources put into the music by the company are almost non-existent, and they can do that, but they choose not to. The music produced for a majority fails to leave a lasting impression and feels soulless, flat, and lifeless. It sometimes feels like when they need a new theme, they don't look who the theme is for, they just take out drum track 11 dot wave and they put it out. <laughs> WWE <laughs> themes just lack a lot of what made it special, and the fall of WWE music is simple. They don't allocate enough resources to the music. There's a failure to understand who these theme songs are being produced for, and it seems like it's all assigned at a random order. For fans of the WWE, music was very influential in their original taste of music, as crazy as that sounds. Listening to it introduced them to a different genre of music, different artists from pay-per-view themes to bumper themes and promo packages. Fans would listen to WWE music unironically. When you look at the 90s, it shows you just how much music resonated that fans were eager to buy albums and yeah. own it for themselves. WWE music has fallen down a hole of parody. Music producers like CFOs and Jim Johnston are dearly missed for the company. And for a company that used to prioritize music, it seems like that's the least of their worries right now. The company just lacks a signature sound. WWE and the music they produced had incredible heights that literally launched the promotion. And as time wore on, they reached such a high quality of music only to come spiraling down. There's so many different versions of themes, so many pieces of music out there by the company now failing to find that same magic. Maybe it's just a microcosm of what music has become, and maybe it's just a rise and fall with the sport of wrestling on its own. As they say, when words fail, music speaks, and right now, WWE's music is dead silent. Hey, I'm, I'm in agreement with him, bro. The music is not the same. Shout out to uh, Superkick Studios once again for our awesome video. It's not the same. I didn't even know they were selling platinum records. Didn't even know this. Topping charts, damn near. Never knew. But you can tell the difference. You can tell that they, Vince is, he kind of just put the music on the back burner. He didn't really put emphasis into it. It was just, you know, hey, let's put something out there that's not that cost effective, gets the point across, and boom. The fans won't know. And we do know. A lot of times, a good theme song can help a wrestler get even more over, especially if it's catchy, especially if it's something that people remember, people want to interact with, and it works. It does. Like, for the longest time, when they changed Seth burn, burn It Down music, at first it was, you know, they had to burn it down, and then he had the, the drums going crazy, and, and it kind of worked, but then they changed it, and people weren't feeling it, and then they, I think they changed it again, and now you have that, Oh, it, it, it caught on. People, he was a heel for a while, and people were still chanting his theme, and it worked. It worked. Seth Rollins is all obviously still over heel or face. Doesn't matter. Fantastic in the ring. Great promos. You know, it's he's already uh you know a made uh you know made player in WWE. But it also just works. It gets people invested and. I'm always gonna say this: you, if you have a good team, you you already you already have the people there. All you gotta do is make sure what your character does in the ring is important. You got the theme, you're good. You know, so I, I definitely do agree with agree with him. The music in WWE is not the same, even when it comes to their their promo build. Sometimes they they pick some good songs, and sometimes they really don't be picking songs that you would think match like the pay-per-view thing i'm you know it, it it that all plays into part of everything you know so comment down below let me know how do you guys feel about the current state of wwe music do you feel like it has gotten stale and do you you know you feel like maybe they should get back to more original songs for a lot of these wrestlers or do you like the way wwe music and their theme songs or uh, for wrestlers are being played now let me know down below i want to get your thoughts and opinions on this but i appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel road to 150k and i am still the undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace